Okay, well here's a photo of the board. I think the photo is more detailed than the video, so I can zoom in further. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what the value of these components should be and what they should measure. Um, if you get a bad measurement, then you're going to have to go ahead and just remove the component and measure it off circuit or out of circuit because in circuit measurement there might be an alternative conduction path which skews the readings. Okay, so um, this is the uh, the two FETs I just removed. There's the hole in the board. You recognise that. There's the FET. Okay, that's the low side FET, high side FET, and there's the gate and source connected together there. Now. Um, I've got a pointer here. Should I get a pointer? Can I have a pointer? A pointer, please. There, yeah, a pointer. There you go. Um, yeah, so let's just make this a little bit bigger now that you oriented yourself as to where you are. Okay, is that good enough? Probably is. Right. So, what have we got? We've got um, these are the um, components associated with the gate drive of the FET. Uh, you've got a 10 ohm there, frequently burns out, a 301 ohm there. Um, 280, 300 ohms, 301, very strange value. I'm sure it's not that critical. <laughs> um, and 100k there. This one there's very rarely burnt out because you just can't get enough current through it to make it burn out. Okay, so this one and this one frequently burnt. This is a straightforward Ka2 is a Ka2 shocky diode, I think. Yeah, a diode. It's to help the uh, the um, gate of the FET discharge more quickly. All right. So that's those there. There's the transistor, obviously. Uh, now moving this over slightly so you get a better view. Um, where are we? There we are. Down there a bit. So um, 100k, unlikely to be damaged. This one used to be a 1.2k. If you've got the 33 microfarad capacitor here. 33 mic microfarad here, then the this one here, can you see that pointer, is 100k, uh, the one at the top next to the capacitor, and then lower down you've got this one that has got no value written on it, which is suspicious, it might have been burnt off, it might have got hot. Used to be 1.2k, is now 49.9 uh, ohms, again to do with the conditioning of the gate signal. Um, to get the dead time correct between the two FETs so you reduce power consumption, dissipation, and also don't get so much noise. If both these FETs go on together, you get a spike. Even if it's just a few nanoseconds, spike of current. And what does that do? Radiates at very high frequencies. Not good. Not good for CE or uh, FCC approvals. Um, and then this one down here, it used to be a 68 picofarad, but again, this was removed on the later ones. That's always blank. Okay, so. You're talking about checking this one here, which is the 49.9 ohm or 50 ohm, effectively, isn't it? All right. So that's the components on the top of board that you need to check when you change the FETs. Um, obviously, do a conduction test on this diode to make sure it's um, not blown. And I think let's have a quick look. There's an equivalent diode for the high side drive circuitry. I think, and I think the equivalent of this is mounted on the underside next to the um, uh, half-bridge gate driver chip. I'll double, double, double check that one and come back to you on that one on the next stage. But they're the ones on the top surface of the board, so they're checked. Uh, right here's the backside image of the uh, power board, the Sandbox 10, with the. Um, components on the underside this is the power supply management circuitry it generates the pulses and manages the drive to the FETs. You've got your uh, fan 7384 uh, half bridge gate drive RIC LL317LC I think it's a wide band width op amp that's used as a comparator in this application LM5021 current mode power supply management chip a inverting you can't see that, can you? Because it's below the screen. Okay, well, let's start off. This board has been repaired before, and it's a working board, and you can see the components it was necessary to change on this particular repair. Okay, so, right, so there's your fan 7384. And that resistor there is a 10 ohm. Okay, 10 ohms. It's been blown up, so it's been changed. I think that's an oversized one I put in, just a bit of a stronger one, but. 
This doesn't need to be a, an 0805. It's just the only one I have probably. Um, so that's 10 ohms. That resistor there is 10 ohms. Okay. These, this resistor here is normally a single resistor, and it would normally be 619 ohms. But I've put a 600 ohm in. Okay. Um, because I didn't have a 619 ohm resistor. They got some strange values on this thing, I tell you. Um, I know it's 619 because I've looked up the four digit resistor code that was on the component on one on a board that hadn't blown up. Uh, capacitor here, um, again, that can get blown up. Um, it's a 0.047 microfarad X7R type, I think, judging by the Q of it. And what else do I know? Yeah, I'd, um, I tried blowing one up to see what sort of voltage went up to because I couldn't find, I thought it was going to have to be a very high voltage one, like 100 or 200 volts. But in fact, I took one out and put it on the high voltage power supply and then wound the voltage up and it sparked over at about 80 volts. So I think that's a 50 volt part. So 0 0.047 50 volt X7R, they go, they can be blown up, okay? Now, where are we now? Let's move the arrow out of the way. That's my, okay, so here we are. Scrolling down slightly to below the uh, the fan chip, there's a 10 ohm resistor there that often blows. Okay, so make sure you change that or check that. We have this component here. Let's move this over slightly. And this component here, there's a 5021 look. So you can see it's been changed. Um, this is a PMP uh, transistor with internal bias resistors. So it's got a resistor between the base and the emitter and uh, a resistor in series with the base. So when you meet that transistor, it's going to be a bit funny. It's an, it's an internally biased PMP transistor. It just saves a couple of resistors on the board. I'm guessing it's cheaper or something. But they sometimes get blown up because the voltage, what happens is the voltage comes in through the gate drive circuitry from a shorted FET be up to 300 volts don't forget through this destroys this device this device then through the power rail on here feeds back into the VCC to this one and destroys this device here this uh, LM5021 that one all right and then 5021 that one you should be able to see that okay so going back onto this side LM5021 obviously that needs to be changed when you do a repair because they are um, temperamental and they are a stress component and they will blow up sooner or later so you might as well put the new latest one in okay they're about a pound each or one dollar twenty and then above the m5021 which is down there you've got this resistor there this one uh 10 ohm okay now that one there is oh God, yeah that's 21k it hasn't got any markings on it annoyingly this one there yeah, that's just a 20 picofarad capacitor. Uh, one of these does get blown up. Which one is it? Is it that? Is it that one there? This one down here. That one is a. I've got that in my notes. I was trying to let my. You don't want to see my notes. They're a complete mess. I can make sense of them just about. No, that's just a point one. Okay, um, I think. Yes, just a point one. And then this resistor here, 18K. One of these is a smoothing capacitor, like a reservoir capacitor, because it gets blown up when the voltage goes haywire. Is it that one? Bear with me, I'm trying to help here. That's just not going as smoothly as I'd hoped. Yeah, it's that one. That's a one microfarad, probably about 40 volts. It uh, should be about an eight or nine volt supply rail there. Okay, so we're talking about this one here next to the LM5021. All right, and so let's just go back to uh, small size and I'll see if there's anything else that needs to be checked on this particular image. Now, what you do have around here is a ordinary uh, switching, another switching diode there, which can get blown up. I've seen that. That's uh, that one there, and this transistor up here, which is a notes I'm just looking down my notes of things that I've blown up and changed I usually keep a tick chart um, just to see what's been um, been problematic in the past because it it really does save you quite a bit of time actually all right okay so yeah um, yeah it's a PMP just a standard general purpose 40 volt 
I've got in my notes PMP transistor. Yep. Anyway, so um, you got the, imp the impression of what to check. You need to check those. If you're changing the FETs, you need to change. Just to recap, to make sure we've got we're swinging from the same hymn sheet. I don't want any complaints from you lot. Um, we're changing. We're changing this, 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 that, that. And that one, and that one. Okay, at least at the very least, check them. Okay, so then when you power it up, it's got the best chance of working. All right, so I'm going to sign off on that one now and go on. So that concludes the second part of this uh, video series on Sound Doc 10. Um, and so if you're interested in seeing when part three, which is going to deal with replacement of the transistors. And then power up and testing, and then uh, um, probably some waveforms and things to check, um, and just generally completing the repair. So that'll be part three. But if you subscribe to part two now, then when part three comes out in a couple of days, you'll get a notification and you can carry on watching. Um, but I hope you find that interesting, and uh, yeah, good luck with your repairs. <laughs>